how much does UTR matter in tennis recruiting? So, you know, so the UTR is very interesting. So <clears throat> the college coaches, you know, it has become the de facto standard. Okay, so UTR uh, for people that know, that do not know, it's called the, uh, the universal tennis rating, right? So this has become kind of the de facto measure, like a quick back of the envelope. You look at the UTR and you see, okay, where does the player stand? So it, if I say that it doesn't matter, you know, that's a straight line, right? Now, with that said, what happened was, and I talked to a lot of college coaches, okay? So we're, you know, actively talking to them. About two years back or so, it got so big that they were looking at UTR as the only de facto factor. So they have kind of moved away from it a little bit. They're looking at other things right now, right? So for example, um, you know, very similar to UTR is something called WTN. Uh, which is, you know, the, which is the world tennis number. That's basically the UTR's competitor uh, run by ITF. WTN right now, again, this is a very personal opinion. I mean, I think it's a, it, it would be phenomenal, right? Like, you know, the, the, the federations are coming in right now. It's not very accurate for a couple of reasons. One, they're only taking sanctioned tournaments. So if you are part of USD and you're playing a tournament, a junior tournament, you're going to be in, you're going to have a WTN. You play ITF, you're going to have a WTN. But you go and play a normal UTR tournament, a men's tournament, something else, those are not counted right now, right? Also, I believe the pro events, the 1525 case, those are not part of WTN, if, um, at least till very recent. I haven't checked that in the last couple of days. So anyway, so when I look at WTN for a player, I look at UTR for a player, UTR is more accurate at this point than WTN. But... With that said, even with UTR, we have seen that there's a lot of discrepancies with UTR. For example, in the US, if you're playing juniors, personally, I would say by and large, the UTR is correct. Okay, so it's it's within the range. Like a, a kid that's a 9-5 UTR, sure, they can beat a 10-5, you know, on a good day. Uh, but, you know, they are not a 12, right, in general, by and large. So the coaches understand that and the good ones obviously look at... Uh, the definitions of the UTR and, and and where they are. Some countries, though, the UTR is not very accurate. Like I have traveled extensively in South America, Central America. I've seen players, even in India. We've been here for the last few weeks. My kids been playing the, you know, the J200s now. And we have seen players that are very good that, you know, that are like, especially there are some girls that are in low to mid eight UTRs, but they play like a nine five UTR because they're, they just don't have the exposure also, the uh, you know in India the AITA, which is the governing body, when when they run their tournaments right now, those those results don't pour into UTR. So a cluster of their tournaments results don't show up and things like that. But 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 college coaches look at that. Uh, not all co coaches probably go so deep into this. You know, it's almost like um, you know in the software there is an adage, right? Like you know you don't get fired for hiring IBM. So you know, they'll go by the UTR and then if the player doesn't pan out, they'll be like, well, the, the UTR was great. So some coaches think like that, but there's obviously coaches now that are looking at development pathway and they're like, okay, I'm going to look a, look a lot beyond UTR, things like that about how to do it and plus how they got the UTR. So that's also very important. And a lot of coaches look, look, look there. And again, these are something when you work yourself or work with a consultant, if your UTR is not very high, but say you're playing tournaments, like you're playing ITF junior tournaments, for example. Sometimes we see for players, the UTRs are a little bit suppressed for two reasons. One, they're playing in these countries where the UTRs are not very, you know, stable. And they're switching surfaces and altitude and all that week after week. It's almost like playing pro. So they have some issues in that, right? But that's something that needs to be explained to the coaches up front so they understand and they buy into it. So that's where, you know, hopefully you guys can do it. We can help you in it or whoever's helping you should be actively working on that and not relying on the coaches. So so I went a little bit longer on the UTR because this is very, very key and, uh, and, and we wanted to uh, kind of bring that up. So before I leave this slide, one quick thing here. I mean, these rankings that we put in there, don't go by the rankings. I mean, they switch. So like, you know, Cam Norrie, these things might change a little bit. But um, as you can see, there's a cluster of ATP singles players that, that are college alums or, or, or you know, that, 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 that came from playing college. Obviously, in the women, there's quite a few coming in, several in doubles coming there. So this is, this is, become a, this is becoming more and more of a viable path. So, and, 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 and there is a whole lot of other players from college, they go, they play pro, but the pro that you don't know, right? Like, I mean, I personally know a lot of players that are going 
they went back to their home countries like France and Germany and they're playing club tennis. And they play localized, but they are actually making a living playing tennis. So this is happening more and more, okay? But again, that's the pro pathway. The biggest difference I would say is if you go to college, the college coaches, coaches in general are not going to stay on you every day to be pro. If you want to be a pro, they will provide you the support, you know? So I know very few college coaches that will dismiss it, they will support you to the best of their abilities, by and large, right? But the player has to own the own the journey and say, okay, you know what, I'm going to use the infrastructure, I'm going to do this, because if somebody wants to, this is, I'm going to leave it with this last thing, if somebody wants to be a pro, the college definitely provides the right infrastructure, the hitting base, things like that. That is not really a problem. It depends on the player. You know, a lot of them don't become pros because I mean, tennis pro is being very hard. There's not a lot of people make actual money. I mean, un unlike people think that, right? Like earlier top 100 could make a living. Now, even I know personally, I know players that are just outside of the 100. I mean, you know, it's it's like an entry-level job because by the time they pay all their expenses and everything else, unless they are lucky to get good sponsors and things like that. So a lot of the players, by the time they graduate, they see that their friends are getting jobs, you know, in good, in, you know, in good companies, you know, close to six figures and they are struggling now for like a thousand dollar payout in little rock so they don't want to do it but it's not that they didn't have the support or 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 they don't have the infrastructure so again this is more of a personal opinion but um just wanted to kind of throw it out so before i move from the slide i'll take a quick pause to see if anybody has any questions here you are high and upon the below the slide yeah. thank yes. you for uh quoting us for uh, the UTR. I just uh, need a clarification that I have checked out your website and it says tennis recruiting profile and uh, I have gone through it. I have signed up with your uh, this profile also. I have created my profile. Can you help me out with what more this profile can help us out? Because yes, my but... son is playing uh, tennis from last five to seven years approx and he is in a good uh, phase and I want to uh, boost the things over on the u.s side sure so so you know like that like whether you come to us or you go somewhere else so the profile is basically it's like a it's like a kind of a basic web page for a player that's kind of important these days the profile should have all the information in in a public domain that can be searchable so what does what does that mean um what what does what does what does that mean, right? Like the profile, uh, it has players rankings. You know, the it should show the ratings, maybe some video clips, schedule of tournament, things like that. So one quick page that if the coaches search, or you can send to the coaches and they can see that where where you're going, you know, where what tournaments you're playing. That's the profile. But the profile is only one part of it. The profile needs to be marketed, especially if you're not a very elite athlete, right? Like, you know, in the U.S., if you are not a blue chip athlete in tennis recruiting, that you are playing the UST and you're a blue chip or a five star, or you don't play the UST system, you're playing ITFs and you're, you know, close to top 100. So then you're not noticed as much all the time, right? So that's your job to go and proactively notice. So that's so that's one of the things that you do with the profile is you go, you you know, you find out the target colleges that you go and, and then you and, and then you go towards that. So, you know, this is kind of like what the consultants do or what we do at Tennis Wizard, right? So we talk to you, we understand your level, we truly understand your financial situation, things like that. We help come up with a list of colleges, right? Like, you know, 15, 20 colleges, sometimes maybe less. And we look at colleges where you think you're a shoe in. You can definitely get in. We look at colleges where you may be you know, getting, getting the right fit and some are rich colleges. You really want to go, but you're not good enough right now, right? I mean, very bluntly speaking. And then what we do is we create that profile and we try to market it in a variety of ways to the colleges, you know, through Instagram, through social media, through giving them, building the rapport, things like that. Like we, so the platform provides the email templates, things like that, uh, Avilash. And then what we do is, you know, through those, we try to make the connections. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about not just our offering, but how the process looks like. Again, for any of these that I'm saying, creating the profile, you know, writing those emails, I mean, how to reach out, when to reach out. These are all specific rules and regulations because there are times the college coaches can contact you. There are times they are prohibited to contact you. So you can do your own research. You can hire a consultant. You can come to us. But regardless, you know, you need to be able to kind of actively, actively doing that. Okay. 
Avilash, that did, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got your point, and I hope it's still on a free side. Uh, we can create it for free. Tennis recruiting profile. Yes, you can. You can right. create. Okay. You can go in, and again, the base version. You can go in, just sign in, and get your profile free. So there is there's no payment needed for that. You know, you can, and then you can start marketing that. So that's that's all we are providing as well. Uh, you know, you can. I mean, you can just you can just sign up, do it. If you have any questions, you can obviously reach out to us as well. Thank right, you. So Thank we, you absolutely. We've we got, we got one more question here, uh, you know, from Mohammed Ibrahim. And the question said that uh, becoming a pro, can you explain what level or rank is reached and the player is called a pro? So there is really no definition of what a pro is. OK, I know players that have been playing full time for years and they have never got one ITF ranking point in men or women. And I'm not even talking about ATP or WTA point ITF ranking. So. You know, there is a there is a after the juniors when they start playing pro, now the ITF has come up with a ranking system. It's like an intermediary ranking called ITF men's ranking, ITF women's ranking. So you win a qualifying match, you know, here and there you start getting points, right? Like final round of qualifying, you reach in a 15k, you get points. You don't get any money, you get points. So I know players that haven't got that, they're playing a full circuit, they call them a pro. So the different there is really no defined definition of a pro. Okay, the pro is so you know that's kind of like from a general standpoint. As far as the college is concerned, okay, and I think that's where your question is. Pro means um, pro means that you know you are making money, and there is some rules and regulations about how much money you can make, and what causes your eligibility to uh, not not be eligible, and and things like that. So I'm gonna. There's a slide on that. So Mohammed, I'm gonna go over that in detail in that slide of how much money you can take and if you take more, how you show it, things like that. So that's uh, that's pretty much how the colleges care about pro. So I'm gonna pause here just just a little bit, Mohammed. Do you have any any clarifying questions on that before I move to the next question? Okay, I think you said that's fine. So there's another question here from Kapil from Kapil Dinesh. So what if someone does not have a UTR since there are no UTR events in India? Do they have a chance of getting into the US college? Talking about a player who's top 100 in national ranking in India, but not have played ITF tournament due to financial restrictions. Thank you. So this is very common, Kapil. So this is what I was saying, right? In India, there are several players that I know that are playing the men's and women's one lakh tournaments. They're very good. I, I look at them, five minutes, I can tell them, right? Like these are like, and I... I have a pretty good range. I understand what their UTR level is. That's when it gets a little bit tricky because, you know, you can work with somebody who has some connections with the coaches that the coaches trust them. You can create the videos of the players playing. Um, you know, obviously, like they want to see some live video matches, not like the ones they're feeding and rallying because that can be fabricated. If you don't have a good UTR or your UTR is subsided and you're not playing ITF because of financial reasons, which is very viable, there is a that, that that is definitely a challenge, and we work with majority of the people we work with are those that we try to package them the best way we can. We go to the coaches and we tell them, you know, I saw a player this time. Like I have to tell you this, right? Like you know, um, there's this one girl that I saw in India this time playing. UTR is very low. She was around you know eight eight two because she's played limited number of tournaments. Um, you know, she played the J100. I mean, she was a qualifier, reached the quarters. Uh, the next two tournaments, she lost to players who were like, you know, right around 200 in, th in three set tie break. So somebody like that, it's very important that the story is told to the coaches and explained uh, whether directly by the parent or by, you know, a platform like us or a consultant, somebody. So th that the sale there needs to happen a little bit more uh, for those kind of players because the data set's not out there. 